Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner, any item to add to the agenda for today? No? Hearing no. Staff, any items to add for the agenda? Thank you. Uh, Commissioner, would any of you like to uh, make a motion to approve the agenda? Move to approve. Second? Second. All of in favor say aye. 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 Motion moved. Second is citizens' comments. Um, anyone like to come in and have a comment or seeing none, we will move to approval of minutes for a, uh, March 3rd, 2014. Uh, Commissioner, anything that you want to revise for the minutes for March 3rd, 2014, which is in our package? Hearing none. Um, staff, any revision? Um, Commissioner, any of you would like to make a motion to approve the minutes for uh, to, uh, March 3rd? Move to approve. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> motion moved. Third, we will look at the review application for the expansion of existing towers, uh, ground towers equipment at Red Oak Park. Uh, presenting will be J.J. Ryan. J.J.? Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Uh, the first item before you tonight is the Red Oak Cell Tower Ground Equipment Expansion. Uh, you can see here that uh, Red Oak Park is located in the northeast uh, corner or section of Burnsville at 12100 River Hills Drive, uh, just south of Cliff Road and just west of Kennelly. Um, we've identified Red Oak Park as a community park that has uh, two soccer fields, two hockey rinks, a pleasure rink, ball fields, tennis court, picnic area, and a disc golf course. And uh, since your, or the city's prior approval in 2009, it has also had a 125-foot cellular uh, monopole tower and a 10 by 10 uh, ground equipment compound. Um, this next slide here, the area in yellow, shows where the current ground equipment sits and where we will be looking to expand uh, for the second phase of the ground equipment. Um, you can see that it's right up against the tree line and just off of where the pleasure, pleasure rink would be for the uh, skating. Uh, I have a few other uh, slides or, or site plans to show you. And uh, on this slide here, Commissioners uh, labeled A1 in your packets. Um, again, you can see the proposed area uh, right here. And you'll see coming in here is the proposed gas line and fiber line. Uh, that's significant because in our request to the applicant, we have asked that they make sure that they bore um, their lines uh, directionally underneath the trees. And then that we ask them for uh, two years of of uh, observation so that there, if there are any trees that are damaged or injured, they would come back and, and take care of that for us. Um, on the next site plan, uh, you'll see this is kind of an enlarged area uh, we have over here. Um, there's one area pointing out right here. That is a smaller oak tree that will be removed in this process. Um, it's just right on, the, right on the line of where that fence, that new fence is going to go. And so it's significant to point that out to you. Um, you'll also see here that they will be making some additional plantings uh, around the compound to help screen the area. Um, this this uh, site plan here shows a little more detail of the fencing. Uh, we are asking for a black shadow box fencing. Uh, I've got an example of that on the next slide, but you can see here the details of it. And you can see here that it is proposed to be eight feet in height. And... Apparently, my additional photos did not make it. Um, commissioners, I can share with you, um, pass this one around. This is the shadow box fence style uh, that we'll be uh, asked to put into place um, on site there. And then uh, one of the other items, before, let me back up here on my uh, presentation. Um, in this area here, uh, that's where they're putting the six by six um, ground shelter. Uh, they were able to provide us with an example photo of that today. Uh, I can pass this one around as well. Uh, the, the one we have here is a tan color. 
Uh, again, I think we would take a look at maybe making it black so that it would kind of blend in with uh, the fence and, and the other equipment that it would be on site there. Uh, but again, this would be inside the fenced area. Uh, so it would be uh, mostly out of sight. The building itself sits about nine and a half feet tall. And again, our fence is going to be eight feet in height. So um, there are a few uh, <coughs> concerns that we help point out to uh, the applicant. And uh, so tonight when hopefully we'll get to a point where you will make a recommendation to our city council for their approval, you will include in that recommendation uh, these bullet points here uh, for council to consider and for our applicant to go back and review and, and take the necessary steps to accom uh, accommodate here. So we're saying the applicant is responsible for the ongoing maintenance um, of the fencing and of the compound and the landscaping around the area. The landscaping will include a five foot wide shredded mulch area on the north and west sides of the compound. Uh, when they put this, uh, when they start doing this project, we are, we are obviously going to be in the middle of summer, so we will have programs happening in the park. We are asking that they work with us, provide us a schedule of their installation dates and times so that we can plan our programs accordingly or so they can plan their work accordingly. And then I did point out earlier that there is a gas and fiber line that is coming into the park. Uh, from River Hills Drive, and we are asking that they will bore directionally to minimize the impact on the existing uh, trees and, and, and uh, landscape area. Um, commissioners, tonight it's also uh, uh, we send out letters to uh, everyone within a 350 uh, foot radius of the park and asking them to come tonight uh, for their public comments and input. Uh, commissioners, I don't see anybody here for that tonight, but. Uh, Commissioner uh, Roof, please you can open that up to public input if anyone would like. Seeing none, we'll move. Very good. Um, and then lastly, uh, Randy Ascaria, Ascarica is here uh, with Falk and Foster. Uh, they are the company that is representing Verizon Wireless on this application. And uh, both he and I would be helpful, or we would be here to answer any questions that you might have. So with that, commissioners? Commissioners? Sure. Any questions for JJ or? I do. OK. If I may please, proceed. Please. Um, this is a pretty small plot, 10 by 22, yes. right? Correct. It would be. Um, it's not something that I'm going to oppose, but I do have concerns. My concern is that that our parks tend to be nibbled to death by little bits and pieces. This is a small piece. We let it go. We put down this cement slab. It was a small piece when we put the tower up. And those little bits add up over time. And I'm likely I think to abstain on this vote unless we can submit with this some uh, request that um, and I don't know this is this is certainly council's preview not ours but I think it would be easier to vote let me put it this way it'd be easier to vote in favor of this kind of thing if we had something like the no net loss program that we have with wetlands that that we commit ourselves to making sure that we're not whittling away at our parks month after month, year after year. I think it would be very helpful if there was some commitment to replace this in some other way. And I do uh, uh, appreciate the bullet points. I think everything there is appropriate. Um, definitely the trees should be protected from damage. And uh, so I, I am certainly uh, approving of that. Okay. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other can comments? I have something. Um, I would request that it would be considered for the concrete pads to be made with the permeable concrete um, to aid in water absorption of the, the landscape there. Any trees that are planted, any landscaping of any kind, be of Minnesota native origin plants, the trees, any grass seed that's laid down to replace loss through the, that uh, treed area. Um, and Potentially, 
um, putting up some bird houses that, uh, into that tree since it's right on the, the edge of the tree area. <coughs> Uh, and and the, the open fields also are very attractive to different kinds of birds, just to help enhance the um, that the area for the native landscape. Those are my rec my recommendations. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, question: If you're going to dig up an oak tree, can we plant it back someplace uh, instead of throwing it away? Commissioner Nachman, our, our city forester. Uh, 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 Dave Gromish has been out on the site taking a look at the tree. Apparently the tree is uh, not not the greatest tree or not the, in greatest health. And so the additional trees will be planted. Uh, I don't know if we'll be putting a, a new oak right in that location or near that facility, but we'll be planting additional trees throughout the summer and in various parks. Okay. Can, I, can I add something to that? Um, that? To point out that um, even if there's a tree that's not in good health, it's still valuable to the environment for a lot of organisms, sometimes more so than a healthy tree. Very true. Okay. Uh, Commissioner uh, Kiefer, you, you brought up a, a, a few points there. Um, for the rest of the commission, are those items that uh, we would like to see move forward as part of our recommendation uh, that, that the applicant provide the permeable concrete, the Minnesota native plantings, and the birdhouses as part of their process, as part of their um, build out of this of this site. Would it be possible, since I don't know what the tree looks like, to plant a tree of equal size with the one that's going to be removed? It would be. We do, we are we will be planting trees in that area, Len, uh, Commissioner Nachman, and. Uh, uh, yes, we can certainly take a look at putting back a tree that is of similar size. Thank you. I just go on record and say that I fully support the idea. I think it almost goes without stating that the species that are used for the landscaping should be Minnesota hardy and preferably Minnesota natives. We certainly don't want to be introducing exotic species uh, into the park as part of this project. So I fully support that. Um, uh, I guess I'll leave it that. Terry? Commissioner, just for your consideration, a couple of comments. Um, I, I think it's a uh, great idea. We have a woodland evaluation system that takes into account the diameter of the tree, the species, the condition, and I would suggest you add a condition that says ask the applicant to replace it with similar value. That may mean a couple of smaller trees but we, we have a formula in place uh, that determines the value of that tree, and we could have them uh, make it a condition that they replace uh, with th that value of that tree. Regarding the pervious concrete, I think there are places where it would work really well. I, I don't think this is one of them. The runoff from there is basically going into uh, the ditches around the, the site around, and so it's ending up infiltrating into the ground, and so I would suggest to you that it's probably not uh, a good bang for anybody's uh, buck to put in uh, that in that particular system uh, because I think the water's infiltrating already in the area. Um, and then, uh, well, I'm, you, you just need to caution you on birdhouses. Somebody needs to maintain those over time. And uh, we've had problems with that. We have a lot of folks that uh, put birdhouses up, and, and then over time they don't come back and maintain them. We don't have the staff to do that. And so I would just caution you on, on that particular condition. Sure. Any other comments? I just have one quick question. I think I know the answer, but I wanted to verify it. Um, the uh, fuel for the generator, I'm assuming that is natural gas. Is that correct? Go. I thought I saw a diesel. I thought I saw one of the schematics, a diesel engine, diesel generator. Randy, would you like to? Normally we put in diesel generators. Could you please come to the mic? Yep. Thank you. Normally we put in diesel generators, but in this particular case, we're looking to put in a natural gas generator in place of the diesel. Okay. Any 
Any other questions? If not, um, I have a question regarding the fence. I'm looking at the picture that's uh, floating. It seems like it's easy for kids um, to climb because of the, the way it's structured. If kids try to choose to go and climb it, can we consider a fence or anything else that's not easier to climb because the way these two bars on the, on the bottom and on top are? That would, be, that would be on the inside, though. Are they inside or outside? Yeah, be on the inside. The picture that's coming up here. That'd be on the that'd be on the inside. Inside. Uh, so outside, be, how it's are they plain? Yeah. Correct. It'd be it'd be a okay. challenge for. Uh, it'd be a challenge for for uh, a youth to get over that fence. Okay. Just okay. Thank you. Any other questions? And uh, thank you for good. Good comments. Uh, commissioners, I'm looking for a recommendation that we uh, move this item forward uh, with the uh, recommendations that were before you in the background um, and then any others that you might have, you might want to see move forward uh, that was brought up here. So the two comments that you guys made um, after um, hearing from Terry, what, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to add it into the consideration or what Terry talked about, the bird feeds, and then also the other uh, concrete um, slab. What, what do we want to decide? Do we want to add for consideration or we want to pull back? Um, I can, I'm comfortable moving forward with just adding in uh, that the plants being landscaped are yeah. Minnesota native plants. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Comment would be of equal, oh. You have a statement of value. For the tree. That was for the tree. Equal value. That's the second part. And then, and then we can add that in also uh, for the replacement of equal value for the one oak that was is being removed. Right. Commissioner Ackman, are you okay with that? Sure. Okay. Sounds good. May I comment for Please. A, um, I would like it shown in the record of the of the minutes that we discussed or that I mentioned that I would like to see this accompanied by um, a commitment to no net loss. I don't think that that's something that we should that we can necessarily add here and expect to uh, uh, alter the outcome. But I definitely want that in the minutes. And I also would just point out that the very language you're using that um, the the oak tree should be replaced with something of equal value seems to me like it would apply just as well to the plot, and that it fits very nicely with what I was just saying that the, that there ought to be some return of, of a similar plot of land of equal value to the parks. And again, I just want to say that and make sure that it's that it's in the record. Appreciate it. Thank you. Terry? Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Wolf, I, this isn't going to address your concern, and absolutely we can reflect that in the minutes. I just wanted to share that uh, City Council does have a policy, and it's in the ordinance, that we try to consolidate these cell tower locations so that we don't have a lot of them in the park system. I know that's a different point than you're trying to make this evening, Commissioner Wolf, but uh, I guess that is something that the council has looked at, at least tr uh, trying to minimize the number of parks where we have cell towers, and there's actually a requirement that they have to share cell towers. That's not something private sector always wants to do. And so this is actually adding another set of antennas to an existing cell tower rather than building another one. And that is in our ordinance. That helps mitigate it a little bit, but uh, surely doesn't get at the point you're trying to make, Commissioner Wolf. But I wanted to point that out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. So that said, are we at a place or position to do a recommendation or thoughts? Okay. Um, so the thoughts will go in, after, and then we are going to add the comments that Sarah made. Um, as an additional recommendation about the natives plants. Native planting. And then also what Terry uh, talked about, uh, the equal value for the uh, Commissioner Ackman, I think. That's what you recommended for the tree. Very good. That was for the tree, am I correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that, okay, sounds good. That said, um, Commissioner, would you like to make a motion to approve the, the request? So moved. Second? Second. Anyone on, not in favor? How many approved? Because I just heard one. 
And there were more absentees, so. So approved. So approved. Okay. Most. How many do we need? How many votes do we need to approve? I think everybody was approved. Okay, I'm I didn't sorry. hear any See, nays. I just wanted. Three abstain. Okay, okay. okay. I just Very wanted good. to make sure I didn't hear anybody. I don't want to make a motion without the commissioners. Okay. Very good. Motion moves. Thank you. Um, the next in uh, in our agenda is threatened and indigenous species update. And Daryl Jacobson will give us an update. Uh, Daryl, please. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Uh, tonight, I just have a, <clears throat> excuse me an informational item. Uh, this is an update on the rare, threatened, endangered species in Burnsville. This is an item that was on your work plan for this year uh, to kind of get some information on this in the city. Uh, I just want to point out that the information throughout this presentation is uh, stuff that we got from the Minnesota DNR. And also, uh, as they released this information to us, we did have to sign an agreement uh, that the city would not publish specific locations of where these rare species are observed. Uh, so you'll see as we go through, I've got maps of the city, but it's kind of broken down into regions. So you'll kind of know the part of the city that the species is located, but we're not allowed to, to, uh, to share exact locations. The picture here on the first one is kittentails. Uh, that'll come up later. We do have that in the southwest uh, part of Burnsville. So this just kind of outlines the regions that I've broken the city down into. It kind of mimics our natural resource master plan and our deer management plan. Uh, so something that hopefully you're at least a little bit familiar with and seeing kind of this breakdown of the city on some other reports. I uh, also want to point out that the rare species are not necessarily on city property. These are records from both private and public property. Uh, also, some of these records may date back many years. And so uh, there may have been a, a documented site or case of an animal or plant being present you know, many years ago. It doesn't mean the DNR, if it hasn't been seen in a couple of years, that the DNR is going to take it off the list. And so um, it is possible that some of the species that are going to get listed may not exist in the city anymore, but at least in somewhat recent record, they, they have shown up. Uh, quick definition of some of the different categories. Uh, we've got endangered, threatened, special concern, and one that I wasn't real familiar with when uh, kind of started putting this together is watch list. That is not an official designation that carries you know, any type of protection or meaning, but the DNR does have some plants and animals under this category. And basically it just means that they're trying to track them and assess their population. Uh, and I guess through that assessment process, if they determine it's rare enough, it may find itself in the future on one of these other lists. But just because it's on the watch list does not mean that it is soon to be special concerned or threatened. It just means that for whatever reason, the DNR is interested in tracking its population. But I wanted to point those out um, as we go through this as well. Uh, also, I think endangered and threatened uh, does come with some special levels of protection. You do need permits from the DNR if you're going to be impacting any of those species. Um, special concern is not uh, that level of protection but it does kind of have its own definition of, of what would get it on that list. So we'll start with the Northwest Management Unit. Uh, we've got two there, Hills Thistle, which is a plant, and then Skipjack Herring, which is a fish. Uh, the West Central Zone, we have a threatened uh, plant there, Edible Valerian. You can see a picture of it uh, down below. The southwest zone, um, a lot more natural area in that part of the city, so you'll see uh, a few more species listed. Kittentails you'll see there first, a threatened plant that was a uh, picture in the first slide. Also several birds, um, you know, flycatcher, a couple kinds of warblers, uh, red-shouldered hawk, uh, those are special concern. Now we go up to the northeast management unit. Uh, 
you know, this area obviously has uh, a lot of natural area as well. You've got uh, some birds with the vireo and the peregrine falcon, uh, paddlefish, and then several mollusks. Uh, these are, you know, some of these are actually endangered. Uh, northeast zone continues. Some more mussels, the mollusks, uh, continue on there. Uh, and there also is a plant on the watch list, cowbane. Uh, and, and more up in that northeast area, you see edible valerian again. That also is in the west central unit. Um, rush, some uh, marsh grass. And then uh, small white lady slipper, uh, special concern. And then world nut rush, also a threatened plant uh, on this list. The east central zone, uh, Lily, <laughs> Lilia leave tway blade uh, is on the watch list. And then there also uh, was a sighting of Blanding's turtle, uh, which is a threatened reptile. Uh, I also know that uh, in Scott County, uh, Blanding's turtle shows up near Burnsville, uh, but we did not uh, have any DNR sightings uh, in Burnsville for the Blanding's turtle, but it is known to be in the area and some uh, other parts of the city as well. And then the southeast management zone is our only zone that came up with uh, no known species uh, on this list. Uh, and so with that, I will stand for any questions if commissioners have any on any of the, I'm not an expert on all these species, but I'll, I can try to answer questions if people have any. Commissioners, any questions? Sure. Uh, Blanding's Please. turtles are found in the southwest corner of the city. I've seen them. In fact, there's a radio track specimen went across. I picked it up off the road and put it on the other side about, three years ago, so somebody knows of it besides me. Yeah, we did. Uh, I have heard reports of people finding them in southwest Burnsville. Apparently those um, reports have not made it to the DNR or else it hasn't been updated as of the time we got this information, but I agree with your assessment. Any other questions? Thank you, Darren. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry. Is there any forecast for updating? list or surveys? Uh, not at this time. Uh, this information is several years old. Um, but I have not, I mean, obviously, if we sign, find something in our process, we try to update the DNR on, on anything that we find. Um, but I have not heard of any uh, major undertaking to try to update this list. How is that? Is it funded by the uh, county or anything like that? or? Yeah, they do have a county biological assessment that takes place periodically, um, but I am not sure when the next assessment is. I haven't heard of anything eminent, at least. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Wolf? If I can follow up, I, I assume for a moment that this was probably self-evident, but the city knows. You know where these organisms have been seen. So Correct. future developments and so forth, you would bring that to our attention if we were looking at developing an area that, that was close to or, or coinciding with a known sighting. Yes, yeah, part of our, uh, I sit on the development review committee for the city. So when developments come in, um, that is one of the things on the checklist that we look for if they're in an undisturbed site, if it's a new development, uh, to see if there may be an impact to any of these. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Sounds good. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you. Appreciate it. Our next item is to continue a review of proposed policies for placing memorials in the park. And presenting would be Terry. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, the next item again is the uh, memorials in the park policy. And uh, this is a policy that you've actually seen on a couple of occasions, so I'm not going to bore you and go through all of the details of the policy again. What I would like to do is give you an overview of the changes that are proposed to the policy. 
But I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview, just in case some of you didn't make it to all the meetings. Um, we uh, currently do not have a policy for the types of memorials that are allowed in the park system, and it's staff's opinion and, and council has, uh, is in agreement and directed us to prepare a policy that we need to have something in writing uh, to guide us when we get requests to put memorials in the park system. Memorials do have the potential to change the look and feel of the park system, and a policy will provide direction for the types and locations of, of memorials that are acceptable. Uh, the other uh, benefit of a policy is we do partner with the Burnsville Community Foundation to place memorials in the park system, and this will kind of just clarify the existing partnership that we have and, and commit it to writing uh, uh, the role of each partner uh, in that uh, partnership. So this policy, again, was reviewed by the Parks Commission at a work session on January 6th. It was brought back uh, in a draft for uh, after January 28th meeting. And then you may recall we had a joint uh, work session with City Council on February 11th, at which time we talked about the draft policy. Uh, Council did request revisions um, to the policy at that time, and they also asked that we have an additional review conducted by the Burnsville Community Foundation board that did happen it happened in march and they are the foundation is in support and in agreement with the revisions that i'm going to share with you this evening and then of course uh we're bringing it back to you this evening uh, for one more look before it goes back to city council and just a reminder the policy lays out uh, the types of memorials that would be allowed in the park system and they would be memorial benches that would be coordinated through the community foundation a paver brick program that we have at Nicollet Commons Park through the foundation, the opportunity for memorial trees, and then a uh, new category that was created at the recommendation of this committee, uh, just general park donations uh, for people that want to support the park system in honor of a loved one, uh, and those would be coordinated through the foundation. Any other memorials outside of those four types uh, would require review by the Parks and Natural Resources Commission and City Council, and the policy establishes a three-month waiting period from the time somebody is deceased to uh, bringing that request forward. All other existing memorials would remain in place until they're, until they're in need of replacement, and then at that point they would have to comply with the policy uh, uh, as outlined. So the revisions that were requested, um, uh, first off, was to add language to clarify that the policy only applies to memorials. Um, we get other sorts of donations to the park system. You may recall uh, Burnsville Lions Playground. Those sorts of donations would come direct to the city um, and would not go through the foundation. And so you can see the uh, statement that was added under Section 2, Paragraph 6. It simply says this policy only applies to memorial donations. The other issue council asked staff to uh, clarify is who determines when, repa when repairs are needed and who will pay for those repairs and or replacement. And under section two, paragraph three is where we talk about benches. And benches were kind of the one area that wasn't really discussed exactly uh, how they were gonna be replaced. There were some questions about benches. Just to remind you, paver bricks, uh, the policy already states is the foundation will replace those and pay for the cost. Uh, memorial trees, it's, it's in the policy already that they will be covered by the donor if it if it's blows down natural causes, that their option. And then general park donations, obviously that would be something that would become part of the park system and the city would pay for that. So, so paragraph three of section two really covers benches and uh, we added language that said the city will determine when benches are in need of repairs or replacement. Um, at such time when a bench or, pla or plaque needs to be replaced or repaired, the foundation will pay for 100% of the cost to do so for memorial benches uh, after the approval date of this policy. So moving forward uh, would be 100% uh, the responsibility of the foundation to pay for that cost. For benches that exist, because there were some benches, actually a majority of the benches were already in before we had this partnership with the foundation, um, what we're suggesting is that if they were installed prior to the approval date of this policy, the city will pay for cost of maintaining the benches, 
and the foundation will pay for the cost of maintaining the plaques. Um, mo well, all of these benches are in places that we would like to have park benches anyhow, and so reality is the city's going to pay for the cost of maintaining those. So uh, we felt like that struck kind of a good balance between what's in place now and then what happens moving forward. There's one uh, uh, section that wasn't in the background packet that uh, I want to add, uh, suggest you add to the motion if you decide to approve it this evening. And that's under section three, it talks about procedure. And I just wanted, I thought it was important that we clarify for all types of memorials, the Parks and Recreation Director will determine when memorial park amenities are to be repaired or replaced. I think it was council's wishes if you were at the work session that the city have control uh, over, you know, the uh, items that are in the park system to make sure they're well maintained and well, well kept. So I would suggest that we add this uh, to the motion and to the language that was in your background packets. I got a chance briefly to share it with the foundation representative who's here this evening. And I think uh, we have two representatives here this evening. And I think they're comfortable with this, this addition. With that, um, the PNR, our PNRC recommendation is requested. Uh, we do have a couple of representatives in the audience from the foundation. And I'd be happy to stand for any questions or, or listen to any comments you might have. Questions? Just a comment, I think, on behalf of the city, I'd like to thank the foundation for participating in keeping Burnsville the way it should look. Thank you. Thank you. Terry, I have a question on slide one where the all three or four recommendations were. I just wanted to clarify for myself. Go, uh, yeah, here. So A, B, C, D, the following memorials, we don't have any waiting period, A, B, C, D, but if there is other, that's where the three-month period will start. Mr. Chairman, that's correct. Okay, just want to clarify. Okay, thank you. So we are requesting a recommendation, a motion to move. Uh, that, yeah, if you're comfortable with that, that would be the request. Commissioners, thoughts? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say? Aye. 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 Motion move. Thank you. Commissioners, just to clarify, and that includes adding the language that I suggested. Okay. Correct. <clears throat> Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. So, lo next, we are moving to miscellaneous. Um, commissioners, any items to report? <clears throat> Mr. <Nothing>? Chair, <clears throat> on May 8th at the Ames Center. Uh, the Burnsville Historical Society is, will be in the art gallery um, and uh, just you are cordially invited. It's the second time that we've done this and it's, we call it Burnsville's Attic and I think you'll get a kick out of some of the things that we're putting up there. Some of you weren't around in 1939, <coughs> uh, some of us were. And uh, the idea is to realize what Burnsville was like in 1939, like no electricity, except if you had your own generator. The good news, there were no potholes because there was no paved streets. And uh, we won't even talk about how people took baths and where the hot water came from. You have to come to the uh, exhibit. Uh, it'll open on the May 8th at 6 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a few speakers, but it'll be open the hours of the Performing Arts Center, and it will go on until May, I mean, June 15th. And we're going to be open <clears throat> on Saturdays from 10 to 4, and um, Sundays from uh, some other time on Saturday, on Sunday. So okay. I hope you have, we'll find some time to come in. Well, on the last day, uh, the last Sunday, <clears throat> we were inviting some of the more older folks in Burnsville, uh, 75 and above, uh, who have experienced life in Burnsville and hear their stories. That they're really pretty interesting. And it'll be a chance to have some of the younger people <clears throat> in Burnsville 
interact with some of the older folks that have lived through it and explain why Burnsville is like it is. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, staff, you like to add? Our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, May 5th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, right now on our agenda, we've got the sustainability plan and the greenhouse gas inventory update scheduled. Sounds good. Thank you. That brings us to the end of our formal meeting agenda. Um, Commissioner, would you like to make a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Bien. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for watching the Burnsville Park National Resource Commission. Thanks.